My name is Ben Berg. Today I'm going to talk about HESRPT, a scheduling policy for minimizing the mean slowdown of parallelizable jobs. This is joint work with Rain Veselo and my advisor, Moore Harkel Balter, in the Computer Science Department at Carnegie Mellon University. As many of you know, modern computer systems are built to exploit parallelism. This could be the multi core architecture in your laptop, the many cores of a supercomputing center, or even parallelizing across entire servers in a data center. In all of these systems, the workloads are increasingly parallel, which makes it especially important to understand how to efficiently allocate resources in these systems. Today we'll consider the problem of allocating servers to parallelizable jobs in a data center. For example, here we have a data center of n equals 16 servers, which is tasked with processing a set of n equals 4 jobs. Each job is assumed to have some inherent size. A job size tells us how long the job would take to complete if run on a single server. Job sizes are assumed to be known to the system, and all jobs are assumed to be present at time zero. We can now exploit parallelism in a couple of ways. First, we can allocate a single server to each job and run these jobs in parallel. Second, because these are parallelizable jobs, we can allocate multiple servers to each individual job. Here we've allocated four servers to each job. The question then is, how much faster will a job run on four servers than it would run on a single server? To answer this question, we'll look at a job speedup function. To visualize this, I'll put servers on the x-axis and the job speedup function s of k on the y-axis. Ideally, jobs would get a speedup function like this green line. This is an ideal speedup function because it tells us that jobs would run three times as fast on three servers and four times as fast on four servers. For example, the blue job would take time one to complete on a single server, but it would take only time one fourth to complete on four servers. Unfortunately, realistic speedup curves look more like this red line. Under a realistic speedup curve, the speedup a job receives is not proportional to the number of servers it runs on, and jobs eventually make highly inefficient use of additional servers. We'll assume that all jobs follow a single speedup function of the form s of k equals k to the p in this talk. In light of these realistic speedup functions, how should we be allocating servers to jobs? To answer this question, we'll define an allocation policy, which determines at every moment in time how many servers are allocated to each job. For example, our allocation policy might allocate all 16 servers to this blue job. Jobs are assumed to be malleable, which means they can change the number of servers they use over time. For example, if we had allocated four servers to each of our jobs, and then we complete the blue job, the remaining jobs can expand to make use of these newly idle servers. We'll also assume that servers are divisible, meaning jobs can receive fractional allocations. Finally, we'll assume that all jobs follow a single speedup function. The question still remains as to how we should design a good allocation policy. For each job, we'll define a flow time, t sub i, to be the time until job i is completed. This gives rise to several intuitive metrics. People have historically considered the goal of minimizing total flow time, equivalent to average flow time in our case where jobs are present at time zero. This is a classic, intuitive metric for minimizing the average time jobs spend in the system. Because it gives all jobs equal weight, this is a good metric for maximizing the overall performance of the system. It has the added benefit of being well understood by both the theory and systems communities. Alternatively, people have considered minimizing total slowdown. Here, each job's response time is divided by the job's completion time if it were given exclusive access to all n servers. Under this metric, longer jobs are capable of tolerating longer waiting times. This metric is particularly popular in multi-user systems where multiple users share the same underlying hardware. In this case, a job's slowdown can be thought of as how much the job was interfered with by other users in the system. Hence, Policies which minimize slowdown can be thought of as fair. Finally, while this metric is less well understood by the theory community, it's widely used in a variety of systems, such as the HPC community, where this metric is referred to as the job's expansion factor. We'll discuss both of these metrics today. For simplicity, I'll stick to minimizing mean flow time for most of the talk. Then later in the talk, I'll discuss how our results generalize to handle the case of minimizing mean slowdown. So, given a set of jobs of known sizes, how should we allocate servers to these jobs in order to minimize the mean flow time across jobs? 
One might think to divide servers equally between jobs, a policy we'll call equity. Equity has the advantage of being a highly efficient policy, since no individual job gets too many servers. One might also think to use size information in making our allocation policy. For example, we could allocate more servers to larger jobs, since these jobs will require more processing before they're complete. Alternately, one might consider favoring the smaller jobs. This will get jobs out of the system quickly. To build some intuition, it helps to think about the single server case. If we had a single server and the same four jobs of known size, the optimal policy would be to complete the jobs in order of the shortest remaining processing time first. That is, we would devote the entire server to completing the shortest job first, then the next shortest job, and finally the longest job would be completed last. So perhaps the thing to do is emulate the single server case and do SRPT. That is, allocate all servers to the shortest remaining job. However, our speedup function tells us that allocating too many servers to an individual job is highly inefficient. What we probably want is a policy that favors small jobs, but doesn't go all the way to SRPT. Let's instead consider an easier problem. Let there be just two jobs, both of size 1. We'll define s of k to be the square root of k, and we'll let n equal 100. It certainly seems that in this nice symmetric case, equi, splitting the servers equally, would be a good policy. To see why this still might not be so good, let's consider the single server case again. If we had a single server tasked with processing these same two jobs, we could do processor sharing, which splits the single server equally between the two jobs. This causes both jobs to finish at time 2. This results in a total flow time of 4. If we had instead done the jobs in first come first serve order, we would have gotten a total flow time of just 3. Because there are just two jobs, we can actually numerically compute the optimal policy in this case. I'll define theta to be the fraction of the n servers allocated to the blue job. We can then graph theta on the x-axis and the total flow time of the two jobs in the y-axis. When theta equals 0.5, we're doing equity. When theta equals 1, we're doing SRPT. We can now show the total flow time of the jobs as a function of theta. Although equi is highly efficient, and although SRPT favors short jobs, neither of these extreme endpoints is optimal in this case. In fact, the optimal allocation is to set theta equal to 0.75. Even in this nice symmetric case, the optimal policy is highly asymmetric. Rather than strictly maximizing efficiency or strictly favoring short jobs, what we actually want is a policy which gets the best of both worlds. We'll call this policy High Efficiency SRPT, or HE SRPT. So how can we analytically compute HE SRPT? Well, if we're given just two jobs of size x1, x2, we can write down an expression for the total flow time under a given policy. If we assume that job 2 is completed first, there's some period of time x2 over s of theta n until job 2 is completed. During this time, there are two jobs in the system, so the total flow time accrued during this period is 2 times x2 over s of theta n. We'll then have to complete job 1. We'll use all n servers to complete whatever remains of job 1 after this first period. If we recall that the form of the speedup function is s of k equals k to the p, we can use standard techniques to find the value of theta star which minimizes this expression. Unfortunately, we see that the expression for total flow time becomes very complex if we add even just a third job. In general, with m jobs in the system, we'll have to solve an optimization problem with m squared variables. To make matters worse, note that this expression explicitly encodes a particular completion order of the jobs. That is, if we were to consider a policy which completes job 2 first instead of job 3, we would have to write down a completely different optimization problem. In fact, there will be a different optimization problem corresponding to each completion order. That means if we don't know anything about the optimal completion order of the jobs, we might have to solve O of M factorial optimization problems to find the optimal policy. Finally, for a given completion order of the jobs, we have to ensure that the allocation policy we find obeys the completion order encoded in our objective function. This means that we actually need to do constrained optimization, and each one of these m factorial optimization problems will have O of m constraints. We'll attack this problem by reducing the search space for the optimal policy. First, we can show how to compute the completion order for the optimal policy. 
For any set of jobs, we can show that the optimal policy, which minimizes mean flow time, will complete jobs in shortest job first order. This allows us to consider just one of the m factorial possible optimization problems. To solve this remaining optimization problem, we'll identify some optimal substructure. By optimal substructure, I mean we'll relate the case of having three jobs in the system to the case of having just two jobs in the system. We'll call this optimal substructure the scale-free property. It's easiest to see the scale-free property via an example. We've already seen that given two jobs, both of size 1, we can compute the optimal allocation theta star. Recall that if p is 0.5, the optimal allocation is to give 75% of the servers to the blue job and 25% of the servers to the purple job. The scale-free property follows from an interesting observation, which is that the optimal fraction theta star does not depend on n. For example, if we were to consider a smaller system that consisted of just eight servers, we would divide these servers the same way to minimize mean flow time. We would give 75% of the servers to the blue job and 25% of the servers to the purple job. This led us to wonder, what happens if the size of the system actually changes over time? That is, what if at time zero there are eight servers, but at some point in the future, eight additional servers become available? It's not immediately clear, but we're able to show that the optimal fraction theta star remains constant as the size of the system changes. So why do we suddenly care about systems of changing sizes? Well, let's consider a different problem where we actually have three jobs in the system. If we allocate eight servers to job three, starting at time zero, from the perspective of jobs one and two, those eight servers are unavailable. Then at some point, job three will complete and exit the system. Now eight additional servers have become available to jobs one and two. What the scale-free property tells us is we use the same fraction theta star to divide servers between jobs one and two both before and after job three is in the system. More formally, we prove that for any job i, the allocation to job i as a fraction of the allocation to jobs larger than i is equal to some constant omega i. We refer to each omega i as a scale-free constant. The power of the scale-free property is that it takes us from an optimization problem of m squared variables to an optimization problem of exactly m scale-free constants. This makes it much easier to write an expression for total flow time as a function of our scale-free constants. We can then explicitly solve for the optimal value of our scale-free constants. Given m scale-free constants, we can precisely define AGSRPT. To define the optimal allocation, I just need a bit of notation. I'll allow theta star sub i of t to denote the optimal allocation to the ith largest job at time t when there are m of t jobs in the system. We calculate that the optimal allocation is given by the following expression. Let's look at an example from earlier using our same set of jobs. I'll put time on the x-axis and allocation on the y-axis. Note that during the first interval of time, smaller jobs are getting larger allocations, but no single job is dominating. Then when the first job, job 1, completes, its servers are redistributed to the remaining jobs according to the scale-free property. This trend continues. Jobs are completed in shortest job first order, and the newly idle servers are reallocated proportionally to the remaining jobs. To summarize, we had the goal of minimizing mean flow time. To do this, we showed that the optimal completion order is shortest job first. We also found some optimal substructure in the form of the scale-free property. We then used these two properties to derive the optimal allocation function. Recall that we had the dual goal of minimizing mean slowdown as well. We can show that the optimal completion order for minimizing mean slowdown is also to complete jobs in shortest job first order. Similarly, we can show that the scale-free property holds in the case of minimizing mean slowdown as well. Hence, all that remains is to derive a new optimal allocation using our scale-free constants and a slightly different objective function. The optimal allocation for slowdown has a new term, zi, which represents the rate at which slowdown is accrued in our system. The optimal allocation for slowdown has the following form. Note that this is very similar to the form of the optimal allocation which minimizes mean flow time. We can look at our same example from before and see very similar trends. Jobs are finished in shortest job first order, and the scale-free property is obeyed. However, in the case of minimizing slowdown, we bias more heavily towards short jobs.
To conclude, I've presented a model for server allocation for parallelizable jobs of known sizes. We had the dual goals of minimizing mean flow time and mean slowdown, and I presented closed forms for the optimal policies in both cases. To find these optimal policies, we reduced the search space by first proving that the optimal completion order was shortest job first, and then deriving the scale-free property. I'm now happy to take any questions.